it allows you to uh, look at one thing at a time or nine things at a time. So you can set this up for any nine functions you want to monitor while it's running. As the uh, startup wizard, so when you first start up, it says uh, use the startup unit, yes. And then it'll ask you what's the horsepower, what's the voltage, what's the uh, uh, speed going, you know, acceleration time and deceleration times. It goes through all that stuff in a question and answer thing. And it's set up. Life's not that easy, though. You know, that does 90% of the jobs. But there's always someone who wants, you know what, I want an output out of that, one of the digital outputs I have on here, the 60. I want that output to light up if the motor gets to three amps. Okay, we can set that up, but then you can't do that in the wizard. That's, the wizard's designed to do most of the, you know, the simple stuff. So you go into parameters here, Chad, and we'll show you how to do that. The DC choke. Uh, there's built-in resistors for protection for the circuitry. Uh, the, the boards are coated to keep uh, fungus from growing on them and wearing them out. Uh, there is a, uh, EMC, a C2, a commercial class uh, EMC filter to keep the uh, radio noise out. And built-in fan, NEMA 12 has an extra fan inside, extra cooling. Um, NEMA 12 is no bigger than the NEMA 1s. Yes? These, do you have to have a special enclosure if you're going to put this in an area of an air handler that's going to be cold? You know what? Yes. If you're going to be putting this in an area that's uh, uh, well outside. Well, I mean, Depend even like there are some of them, like if you're in the lower section, you're going to be downstream of the evaporator. So if you're going to be into some condensing. Yeah, that's still above the, uh, you know, you, you look at what, 40 degrees? That's, it's still about the empty of an handle. So that, that's not a problem. It, it's not uncommon to see these drives, or any drive, in a, inside the air handler on a roof and, uh, in, the, uh, in the panel. Because it's, normally the panel is not that uh, cold or hot. You know, it's, it's grabbing some of that conditioned air. So humidity isn't a problem? No, you, uh, those coated boards help that. Of course, looking at holes up to it, keep it cool is probably not a good idea. That's the thing that told me that. Um, and uh, you have the ability to look up two PID controllers to it and switch between them. The boards do plug in, and, and uh, we've got a screwdriver here. Hang on, I'm out there. Can you got a little pocket screwdriver? Certainly. Uh, you can pull this off. Van, I will assist me. Two things. <laughs> the boards do come out, and you can add boards. There's a spot you can add. For instance, I've got the communication board put in this thing here because one of my customers called me and said, I can't seem to get it to communicate, so I do okay what he did, because I had to order a board by mistake and plug it in there, and was able to duplicate what he was doing. And yeah, it worked for me. I was able to bring it into my, uh, my case and be able to talk to it. Um, <coughs> the wiring's down here. This is on one board here. And the place to put, plug the other ones, right here is my communication board. And there's another spot right here to plug a second board, or third board in, if I needed more I.O. I've had one job where the guy needed more than the I.O. that came with it. Yeah. Um, and he's one of those engineers that you know, they control guys who likes to have anything he's got, he uses every single function that that thing has. And so we got NXS drives. They had a bunch of boards on them. Uh, when one thing turned on, it turned on another thing, it turned on another thing, and so on. And you have that capability built into this thing to do that. I'll get into that in a little while. Uh, 
So the slot is here, it just plugs into the side, and the connectors are here, the connectors are all numbered, uh, and they correspond to the wiring diagram. And we'll get into those in a minute. The uh, communication, RS-485, BACnet, N2, Modbus, those are all built in. So if you're using Modbus or Johnson N2 or, or uh, BACnet, yeah, it's there. And there are instruction books for each of those communication protocols that I've set them up. Ethernet, uh, Modbus, or BACnet over Ethernet, and there's an Ethernet plug right here. You plug into the Ethernet, connect to it. You can also plug in here for the, uh, if you want to use your computer, you program it, or if you want an extension so you can put the your uh, keypad on, on the front of the panel and have it built into the panel. And here's where, on, on the door underneath, down here, this is what it looks like if you turn the drive that way. And there's your connections uh, for your, uh, your Modbus, and your Batman, and then to RS-45 connections down there. Uh, also, the Ethernet connections built into the processor. And the protocols that are supported, there's a, a Vacon HMI and an Ethernet IP. Uh, ProfitNet is coming. And you can go up to 100 meters to the uh, cable. So, important things are maintenance. Keep it dry, keep it clean, tight connections. One of the biggest problems you've had is people over tighten the connections and they break. These don't just plug in, they have to be soldered in place. Um, and they want to be able to show you how to remove the fan on the demo model. I'm not going to do that. Uh, in the right enclosure, you want to make sure that you have the uh, proper enclosure. You can see some spots here where we've <coughs> gotten dirt or, or uh, moisture on the, uh, I don't know, it's kind of hard to see these, on the uh, boards. And uh, kind of does a number of circuits. Have you ever heard one of these things go pop? I jumped once <laughs> at a 75 horsepower drive and uh, it was NX, NXS and for some reason or other the capacitor went. The capacitor's big and they're very loud. I was, I was walking over <laughs> to plug into my, my computer into it to, to pull out the, you know, the uh, memories of what the failure was and uh, the guy didn't know he had it on and they called to run and the capacitor just popped. And, well, I, after I changed my pants, I uh, <laughs> came back and looked at it, and you know, we actually replaced it. Uh, the, uh, there are switches on these boards that allow you to change the inputs to, you know, current versus voltage by flipping the switches. Now, they're all preset. Your know, first one is, is voltage, the second one's current. You can change that. If you want two voltage inputs and what you want to change, go ahead. Please, mark it down somewhere that you've done that. So the next guy who comes and looks at it can figure out what you've done. Personally, I think the switch is alone. There's enough inputs and outputs that, that, that satisfy me if I need anything uh, done. I would just change the output for one that matches what I want. Uh, the standard uh, VFD bypass, this is what it looks like for the Smart. I think it's blue for the uh, MXS. Uh, the configurations, one is disconnect only. You don't fuse disconnect. Two contactor, three contactor, and three contact with auto bypass. That scares me. Auto bypass, that means if the alarm goes on, it automatically goes into bypass. Why would you do that? But someone asked for it. Some engineer, well, it's gotta go into auto bypass. You know, you can't have the kids too hot in school. Um, enable one, twelve, and three R are available for the bypasses. And three R, of course, would.